Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us once again, and welcome back. What are we going to discuss? We are going to discuss excise duty today. What is the excise duty? What are the excise law? And where this excise duty has been implemented in the UAE? So where this excise duty has been implemented in in the UAE, what are the rates for the excise duty? What are the rates for the excise duty? And uh, what are the purpose of implementing excise duty in the UAE? So all these things, overview, rates, products which are subject to excise duty, along with this, at what stage excise duty is applicable, how to submit the return, when this excise duty is payable. All these things we are covering in our this webinar today. This will give us an overview of our excise duty. Then in our next webinars, we will be discussing in detail everything related to excise duty. So whatever we have covered till now, we have almost conducted more than 60, 65 webinars. So this is the first webinar on the excise duty, impact of higher excise duty on a greener future. I have written these articles in our in the last week in Khalish Times and the title was Impact This Excise duty leads to a greener future. Higher excise duty leads to a greener future. What is the reason for this? Why have we implemented this? Why, why have we written this? So just look into this example. In this example, this is option A. In the option A, two products have been shown. Assuming the one bottle of water and one can of Coca-Cola. The prices are same. This is just for assumption. This is for discussion purposes. Prices are same. Means bottle of water is 5 dirham and Coca-Cola is 5 dirham. And you are a buyer. You have two options only. Then you are thinking you to take one drink. Bottle of water or Coca-Cola. From the financial point of view, you are indifferent because the price of this bottle of water is 5, the price of this Coca-Cola is 5 as well. In the second scenario, the price of the bottle of water is 5, but the price of Coca-Cola is 7.5. Once the price of the Coca-Cola is 7.5, this is 50% more expensive as compared to the bottle of water. Once this 50% more expensive, Coca-Cola is 50% more expensive as compared to the bottle of water, then here you are not indifferent. Means you will, your financial factor is the key important thing. You will be thinking you need to spend 50% extra. You need to go for a bottle of water. So if the price of the Coca-Cola is 50% more expensive as compared to the bottle of water, means you will, you will be inclined toward the bottle of water for, to drink it. So the chances are there because the price of the Coca-Cola is higher as compared to the price of the bottle. That means it will have the impact on the purchasing power of the people. Might be a lot of people will not be afford the Coca-Cola and might be some people going for the comparison in between the prices at the end. The demand for the Coca-Cola will come down and there are maximum chances the people will incline towards the bottle of water. This 50% tax which has been being paid, even the people who are buying the Coca-Cola, if they are 50% extra tax, means this is the premium they are paying. This premium, whatever they are paying on a specific product, this is called excise duty. Excise duty is applicable on specific products. These are not applicable on all products. These are specific products which are specifically harmful to human health, like tobacco, like carbonated drinks, like sweetened beverages, like vaping, all these things. So the objective is basically, the government objective is to cut the utilization usage of the harmful product to, that will ultimately lead to the greener future. So this 50% tax, as I mentioned, this is the excise duty applicable on a specific product which are harmful to the human health. Now two possibilities there. 
when the government has applied 50% tax on the coca cola government has indirectly changed the consumption pattern of the buyers buyer initially they were indifferent and the option one here they were indifferent here they are not indifferent now they are taking considering the financial factor as well first of all government has changed the behavior consumption pattern of the users second even if the people are buying coca cola by paying 50% extra tax premium this money is going to the government indirectly basically the user will be collecting at the end because this is indirect tax and then money will be going to the government if this money is going to the government at the end government will be spending this money for the welfare of the public so we need to be very clear that the excise duty is an indirect tax as i mentioned the person who is collecting the tax this is not ultimately their responsibility they are collecting on behalf of the government ultimately this money is going to the government indirect tax leveled on the specific excise goods which have adverse effect on the human health this is the first thing not all, all the products are not subject to excise duty only specific products which are harmful to the human they are subject to excise duty second this is not a transaction based tax like vat whenever we are buying we are selling on each and every transaction if applicable vat is applicable on transactional basis might be 5% might be 0% might be out of scope might be exempt but this is not the case for excise tax for the excise tax whenever the goods are released for utilization purposes into the market excise tax is applicable it doesn't matter whenever these are being sold to the end user so this is not a transaction based tax because this is goods that be this is applicable at the release or of the goods for consumption purposes this is applicable on specific goods and services not every good and service like fuel tobacco and alcohol and objective is basically to increase the prices of the goods which are harmful for the humans so that their utilization needs to be re reduced and if the still people are using it they need to pay premium which will go to the government government will spend on the public spendings so what are the key why excise duty the two important thing what the first important thing is basically curb the consumption of unhealthy goods and give an option to the people they need to make healthier choices influencing consumer behavior as i mentioned this is the first objective second objective is government will have the additional revenue these are the two core objective this is the reason that excise tax has been implemented into the uae now at what stage excise tax is applicable so first of all just look into this diagram this diagram tells us excise tax is applicable on the importers of the excisable goods excise tax is applicable on the producer or manufacturer of the excisable goods excise tax is applicable on the stockpilers and excise tax is applicable on the warehouse keepers these four parties are subject to excise tax if you are not a man importer of the excisable goods if you are not a manufacturer of the excisable goods if you are not a stockpiler if you are not a warehouse keeper of the excisable goods excise tax is not applicable on you this is the first thing only four parties in the ue market are subject to excise duty now at what stage they are liable to pay tax now importer will go to the provisions of the law as well importer is liable to pay excise tax at the time of the import of the excisable goods whenever the goods are being cleared sorry this is at the time of the import they need to account for and they need to pay later on at the time of the import they need to account for whenever the goods are being imported goods are clearing through the customs they need to account for the excise duty by submitting declarations they need to fill the declaration then the goods will be cleared and if the goods are moving from the ship and goods are coming in the designated zone from these goods have not been released on the for free circulation on the mainland so if the goods have not been released for free circulation goods are still in the designated zone when the goods will be released from the designated zone the importer will be liable to account for the excise duty account for the excise duty through the declaration this is the first thing related to the importer my producers and manufacturer at the time of production producers and manufacturer 
दे आर लाइबल टू अकाउंट फॉर द एक्साइज ड्यूटी अकाउंट फॉर एम नॉट आस्क टू पे अकाउंट फॉर अकाउंट फॉर द एक्साइज ड्यूटी एट द टाइम ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन वेन द गुड्स आर बींग मैनुफैक्चर्ड वेन एवर द एक्साइजेबल गुड्स आर बींग मैनुफैक्चर्ड दीज प्रोड्यूसर दीज मैनुफैक्चर दे आर लाइबल टू अकाउंट फॉर द एक्साइज ड्यूटी ऑन द गुड्स दैट आर बींग मैनुफैक्चर दैट विल बी फ्रीली अवेलेबल टू सेल टू द रिटेलर और टू द एंड यूजर टू द मार्केट दिस इज द सेकेंड स्टॉक पाइलर स्टॉक पाइलर आर बेसिकली द पीपल्स हु आर होल्डिंग द स्टॉक विच इज इन एक्सेस फ्रॉम द नॉर्मल यूजेज एंड दे हैव नॉट पेड एक्साइज ड्यूटी ऑन दो स्टॉक दिस इज स्टॉक पाइलर स्टॉक पाइलर ऑफ द एक्साइजेबल गुड दे आर लाइबल टू एक्साइज ड्यूटी एज वेल दे आर लाइबल टू बी एक्साइज ड्यूटी ऑन द डेट ऑफ एक्विजिशन ऑफ द गुड्स Odd effective date of the law, a new product becomes subject to excise. Whichever is coming earlier, they will be liable to excise duty. So, a condition is stock pilot. They must be holding stock, excessive stock, excessive excisable goods, and they have already not paid any tax on those. Then they will be subject to excise duty on those goods. And the fourth player in the market is warehouse keepers. Warehouse keepers are like something like designated zones. We have already discussed designated zones so many times. You can set up the warehouse keeper on the mainland as well. You need to apply to the FTA. You can set a warehouse that you need to appoint one warehouse keeper. That warehouse, if the goods are in the, if the excisable goods are within the warehouse, you will not be liable to pay excise duty. Whenever the goods are moving from one warehouse to another warehouse, which has been approved by the FTA, still excise duty will not be applicable because it will be considered the goods are moving from the designated zone to designated zone, warehouse to warehouse, which has been approved by the FTA, which is under there under the warehouse keeper management and supervision. So whenever the goods are leaving the warehouse, then these goods will be subject to excise duty, leaving the warehouse for consumption. and free use of the goods so these are the four part for if you ask on something is this excise duty applicable you need to think are you importer manufacturer stock piler or warehouse keeper of the excisable goods if yes excise duty will be applicable at what stage importer at the import stage manufacturer at the time of production stock piler any one of date of acquisition effective date of the new law or new products become available and this is the excess quantity on the excess quantity you will be liable to pay excise duty on which you have already not paid excise duty warehouse then for the warehouse this is the warehouse then whenever the goods are leaving the warehouse subject to the condition this warehouse has already been approved by the fta and this is being supervised by the warehouse keepers so four party subject to ft subject to excise duty we know at what stage they will be liable to pay excise duty no do you use the release for consumption if you are going to this building of the law excise duty is applicable when the goods are released for free consumption in the uae what is the release for free consumption it has been given in the guide release for free consumption they say goods will be considered released for free consumption when they are produced in the free circulation whenever the goods are being produced out of the designated zone then it will be considered a release for free circulation free consumption or they leave a designated zone are released into the free circulation whenever any of these categories condition is being fulfilled we will say the goods have been released for consumption four parties subject to excise duty stages we have discussed as well a release for consumption means whenever they are produced or released from the designated zone it will be assumed release for consumption treated as a produce now they have defined this word produced as well this is the produced if the manufacturer is producing the excisable goods they are asking it will be assumed the goods have been produced when when the, they are readily ready to be held for retail sale ready to be they are ready to be held for the retail sale this is the first condition ready to be held by the for the retail sale just sorry just one so they are ready to be held for the retail sale second where the goods are not intended ready for ready retail sale ready to be held for the retail sale where the goods are not intended for retail sale retail sale ready for retail sale if the goods are being manufactured they are ready for retail sale yes when the goods are not intended for retail sale they are they are the goods are not intended for retail sale held for the retail sale where
they are ready to be held for the retail sale. If the goods are being manufactured, they are ready for the retail sale. Then at this stage, excise duty, you need to account for the excise duty. When the goods are not intended for retail sale, not intended for retail sale, where they are fit for the consumption for retail sale. If these are fit to be consumed for the retail sale at that stage, are ready to be sold to a retailer. If the goods have been manufactured, these are ready to be sold to the retailer. Retailer will sell, further sell it to the end user. So whatever the case, basically whenever the goods are being manufactured, excisable goods are being manufactured, the manufacturer is liable to account for the excise duty. So four stages, importer, import stage, manufacturer, manufacturing stock, stockpiler, any three of the first. Then, then warehouse keeper, whenever the goods are being released from the warehouse, these are the four stages where this excise duty will be applicable. Now, who is the stockpiler? Stockpiler, if any person or business that has stored goods in excess quantity of excisable goods, excess quantity of excisable goods and cannot prove that excise duty has already been paid on the, those goods, then the person will be considered stockpiler. The stockpiler definition has been given in the guide. Excess quantity means excisable goods, excesses of the average monthly stock level. We need to consider monthly stock level. We need to consider average stock level for the previous 12 months divided by 12, you will get a monthly stock level. If the goods are more than the monthly stock level, then you will be liable to pay excise on the excess quantity on which you have already not paid the excise. The second option is twice the average monthly selling stock. So basically, on the, whatever the selling stock that you are maintaining, you need to maintain, take the two months average, anything beyond that, you will be liable to pay excise duty. This is for the stockpiler. For the warehouse keeper, as I mentioned, a designated zone, you can set up a warehouse even on the mainland as well after the approval of the FTA. A designated zone is a warehouse zone or area inside the UAE. It doesn't matter in the designated zone, in the free zone on the mainland, area in the UAE where the excise tax will not be applicable. If the goods are moving from warehouse to warehouse, which has been approved by the FTA, excise tax will not be applicable. It also known the excise warehouse. The FTA registered and approved area to be designated zone. FTA will also appoint warehouse keeper for particular zones and thus they will be in charge over the zone, as I mentioned earlier. So stockpiler, warehouse keepers, warehouse can be set up anywhere in the free zone, mainland, or in the designated zone, stockpiler, they need to pay excise and the excess quantity formula is given 12 months average or two months average stock. So they need to pay excise duty on the excess quantity when they need to pay. We already discussed the timeline as well. Now the question is which products are subject to excise duty? We have established excise duty is applicable on four parties. We have established excise duty is applicable at the time of import, at the time of the production at the time of the release of goods from the warehouse approved by the FTA or for the stockpiler on the excess quantity on the effective date of the law or for the when the new products are available out of these three. We have already discussed this. Now the question arises, which products are subject to excise duty? Is the every product is subject to excise duty? No, not at all. We have discussed in the very beginning that excise duty is only applicable on the products which are harmful for the human health and government wanted to change the pattern of, of behavior of the people. They need to use the goods. They should not use the goods which are which are harmful for their health. Moreover, government wanted to get the money as well. Anyway, the important point is the government wanted looking for a greener future. Government has implemented excise duty. They wanted to cut the users of the goods which are harmful for the people in living in this country. So these are the goods on which excise duty is applicable. And these goods are carbonated drinks. We'll discuss the carbonated drinks. Energy drinks, tobacco and tobacco products, electronic smoking devices and tools, liquid use in the electronic smoking devices and tools and sweetened drinks. These products are subject to excise duty. Any other product other than this, this is not subject to excise duty and excise duty is not applicable on any services in the UAE. So these are the only products, if handled by four parties that were discussed earlier, then excise duty will be applicable. Otherwise, excise duty will not be applicable. If assuming there is a one company, just take it, just take it car for car for is buying the excisable goods, selling the excisable goods, excise duty is applicable? No. Car 4 is 
I assume and car policy buying the goods from locally. If they're important, definitely they will be liable to pay good at the time of import. If you're buying locally and selling locally, okay, let's take very small grocery into the market. If they are buying, assuming from the car for, and because these duty applicable goods, they are buying from the car for then selling into the market, excise duty will not be applicable because they are not the importer, they are not the manufacturer, they are not the stock piler, they are not the warehouse keeper, assuming this. So these four parties, if the, any of those four, four parties dealing out of these four goods, excise duty will be applicable. What is the rate for the excise duty? Losses for the carbonated drinks, it will be 50%. For the sweetened beverages, it will be 50%. Other than this, it will be 100% excise duty. So now the carbonated drinks, what has been defined in the law, in the guide, include any added drinks except from the unflavored air water. Basically, these are the cola, cans, lemon lime drinks, orange soda, but alcohol, alcohol is not subject to excise duty, just keep in mind. Energy drinks like Red Bull, Monster Energy, such types of, we'll discuss, we will have another webinar where we will discuss the product in detail, in nitty gritty, what are the exactly included in this. So for the time at the high level, I can say carbonated drinks, energy drinks, tobacco and tobacco products, chewing tobacco, cigars, cigarettes, in the same way, electronics to so make devices, the vapes are very common into the market, it will be subject to excise duty as well. Sweetened beverages like ready to drink, in which you tended to be used as a drink, concentrate, powder, gel, all these five basically going back. These products, if you are categorizing these four, for all projects into the excise, these are basically carbonated drinks, sweetened beverages, and tobacco. These are three major classes. Carbonated drinks, sweetened beverages, and tobacco or tobacco devices related to this, these will be subject to excise duty. Now, excise price. The price at what is the price at which excise will be applicable? Whatever we have discussed now, we discuss what is excise duty, on which party this is applicable, on which goods this is applicable, at what stage excise duty is applicable, what is the rate of the excise duty. Now, these rate 50%, 100%. On which price this excise rate will be applicable? This is another question. One of the biggest question, important question is, on which price this 50% or 100% will be applicable? Law says this will be applicable on the excise price. How to calculate the excise price? There's excise price is the higher of the price determined by the FTA or the designated retail sale price, less excise duty already included in the price. So basically objective higher of, what is higher of, precise price ascertained by the FTA, assuming FTA has ascertained 100, designated average retail, we need to calculate the average retail price and this is the formula for the average retail price, we look into this, designated retail sale price, retail sale price is assuming 105, this 105 including excise duty of 50, or 72, how much it will be, it will be around 52.5, yeah 52.5. Just assuming 50% of the excise, remaining will be 52.5. This 52.5 or 100, whichever is higher, this will become your excise base. Excise duty will be applicable on the excise price. It might be this rate is different for me. So excise price, excise duty will be applicable on the excise price. Excise price, excise price is higher of the price ascertained by the FTA or the designated retail selling price, less the excise duty included in it. How will you calculate a designated retail selling price? This thing you can take it from the FTA portal. Price ascertained by the FTA. But how will you calculate a designated retail selling price? Then you will be able to compare. Law says the designated retail sale price is the higher of. What is the higher of? Recommended selling price or the average retail selling price? Recommended. Recommended selling price by the FTA or every retail selling price higher of this. So every retail sale price, they have given the formula in the guide. How will you calculate average retail selling price? They have given, you need to calculate the average selling price of the product on, you need to take sample, Jan, Feb, March, April, onward for the last 12 months, you need to take the price of those samples and identify the various prices of the product that has already been sold in the market in the last 12 months. Take the goods, average selling price, take the samples of the last 12 months, then remove the excise duty out of this. Remaining will be excise exclusive selling price. Then you need to multiply, weighted average simple formula. Excise exclusive selling price, multiply number of units, divided by number of units, you will be getting one average price. This is called notional price. This notional price, you need to apply excise duty at this notional price, then you will be getting every retail selling price. 
So just if I'm looking into the example, every retail selling price, you are taking some sample one, your 10 quantity, 20 quantity, I'm taking two for the time being. Product is assuming what I've sold, this is uh, 10, this is 20. Okay, total, how much it will be? You need to basically remove the excise duty. As I exit, assuming 5. Here, 10. Remaining price will be 5. Remaining price will be 10. You need to multiply 10, multiply 5, 20, multiply 10. So, 10 multiply 5, 50 plus 20 multiply 5, 200, 200. A total quantity, quantity 20 plus 10, 30. 250 divided by 30, you will be getting one average price. This is, this is every tax base. This every tax base, and you need to apply this 50% or 100% excise duty based upon this average price. And then you will be getting every retail selling price. So multiply figure four and after to calculate the notional, this is notional price, then you need to average selling price to, to get the average retail selling price of the goods. So this is the mechanism. How will you ascertain the Excise price, excise price, excise price basis is higher, higher of what? Higher of price ascertained by the FTA, a designated retail selling price. How will you calculate a designated retail selling price, recommended selling price, or every retail selling price? Higher of both. And every retail selling price, they have given the proper mechanism. Based upon this, you will be based upon this, you will calculate every retail selling price. Then you will be arriving out of this. Designated retail price, put the designated retail prices, compare with the price as given by the FTA and higher of this, it will be your excise price on this excise duty will be applicable and what percentage it will be applicable, it depends upon the nature of the goods. Just look into this excise price. This is carbonated drinks and sweetened beverages. I assume, okay, as per law, excise duty is 50% on the carbonated drinks and sweetened beverages that we'll discuss. Now, excise price. Excise price, we have learned in the previous three slides, how to calculate two slides, how to calculate the excise price. I am assuming excise price is 100. Excise duty is 50 because excise duty 50 will be applicable on the excise price. Price before VAT will be 150. VAT will be 7.5. Price includes of VAT 157.5. Now, how much is the excise tax percentage of the price before VAT? Excise tax percentage of the price before VAT is 33%. How have I calculated 50 divided by 150? So in the same way, in case of energy drinks, tobacco products and devices, 100% excise duty. Price is 100, excise duty is 100. Price before VAT is 200. VAT will be 10. Price inclusive of VAT 210. How much is the excise tax percentage of the price before VAT 50%? How I calculated 100 divided by 250%. So this is how we can calculate the excise tax and how can we calculate. You can just, just important thing is you need to keep in mind VAT has been implemented on a price inclusive of excise duty. Who must register for excise duty? We have already discussed who needs to register. Who needs to register? Is this any threshold? No, not at all. Like threshold is applicable for the VAT. But for the excise duty, threshold is not applicable. If you are a manufacturer, if you are an importer, if you are a stock filer, if you are a warehouse keeper of the excise goods, then without any threshold, excise duty is applicable on you. You need to apply for registration to the FTA on a timely basis. You must register for excise duty. If you are importer, producer, as I mentioned, person releasing the excise goods from the designated zone or stock filer where excise duty has not previously been paid on the goods in the UN stock file undertaking for business purposes. So excise tax, you will be liable to register, register and any threshold is not applicable. Just keep in mind. Then after the registration, the taxable person must submit their excise tax return. Usually, if your tax period is usually, usually I'm asking excise period is one month. And after the end of the tax period, within 15 days of the following month, you are liable to submit the tax return and you are liable, sorry, you are liable to submit the excise return and you are liable to pay the excise duty as well. So how will you calculate excise duty? Now we have discussed in our previous, whenever the goods are being released from the designated zone, goods are being released, imported, goods are being released with the every person who is subject to excise duty, they need to pass a declaration. Once they are passing the declaration, this declaration is online. 
once they are posting the online declaration, FTS system is gathering the record, gathering the record. Whenever your return will be due, you will go on the FTA portal. You will log into your ID and password. System will get the detail based upon the declaration automatically. System will calculate your excise duty. You will be liable to, you will be required to review it. After reviewing it, you will be liable to submit the return of the excise duty within 15 days from the end of the relevant tax period. Once you are submitting the return, you will be liable to pay the excise duty as well. And the timeline, as I mentioned, this is 15th of the following tax period. So this tax period can be, usually this is the one month as per law, but you can take a longer tax period after discussion with the FTA. So whenever the tax period is coming to an end, within 15 days, from the end of the relevant tax period, you need to log into the portal on the Imara portal, log in, populate your excise tax return from the respective declarations, the return will be populated, review the return, submit to the FTA and you need to pay the excise duty as well. Exemption for registration, as I didn't say, <laughs> importer, manufacturer, stock pillar, warehouse keeper of the excise duty is liable to register, there is one exception as well. FTA says, FTA may grant, this is not even compulsory, may grant an exemption for a registration to the person who import excise goods, not on a regular basis. If you are any of those four parties, as a disc, you are liable to register without any threshold, but you have right to take an exemption as well. If you are a, not a regular importer, they have defined the regular importer as well. The registration exam by the FTA, if the person import the excisable goods once in a once in six months or when they import four times in 24 months, four times in 24 months or once in six months, you are not liable to register because you will not be considered a regular importer of the excise goods. So otherwise, you will be liable to register for excise purposes. You will be liable to submit the return as well. You will be liable to pay the tax as well, excise tax. Can you take the excise duty refund? Like excise duty, this is the one the very interesting thing. There is the one party basically. This party is buying excise duty, then excisable product selling excisable product. Now this party is a not a manufacturer, not an importer, not stock filer, not a warehouse keeper. They are buying, assuming whenever they are buying, initially the price was 100. Excise duty built into the price 50, total price is 150. So this person is buying 150. Might be at the type of VAT is as well. I'm assuming this part is not registered for VAT purposes. I'm assuming. So if they are buying 150, might be they are selling it 160. Now the question is this 50. This 50, this party can take the refund for this 50. Last say three possibilities are there. Even this is a normal party. At the same time, there is a possibility that this party is consumption. There is basically another possibility. This person is not manufacturer. This person is not importer, stock puller, warehouse keeper. Then they are buying, selling. Can they take the refund for the excise duty? No, because they have paid this 50% they have collected from this party. This is part of their price. But the question arises, if there is a possibility, if one person is importing the sizable goods, then they are re-exporting. Because this, as I mentioned, this is the consumption tax. If the goods are being consumed in the UAE, you will be liable to pay the excise duty in the UAE as well. If the goods are not being consumed in the UAE, you are not liable to pay any excise duty in the UAE. So if you are importer of the excisable goods, once you are importing of the excisable goods, then you are re-exporting. Goods are not being consumed in the UAE. Once the goods are not being consumed in the UAE, you don't have any right to pay any excise duty to the government. So you have a right to apply for the refund. This is the first situation. They said excise tax has been paid by the taxable person excisable good, which has subsequently been exported to a place outside the UAE. Means consumption tax, goods has not been consumed in the UAE. Whatever you have paid excise duty at the time of import, you will take the refund. At the end, you will not be paying any excise duty in the UAE. This is the first thing. Second, now you are importing the excise goods or you are buying the excisable goods or you are manufacturing the excisable goods. Those excisable goods are being used another, in another product that is subject to excise duty. We'll look at the next example on the given. So excisable products are being used to manufacture another excisable product which is subject to excise duty. Then to avoid the double taxation or double excisable duty at then you will be liable to pay 
Excise duty on the final product. So you are right to take the refund from the FTA as well because you just provided double taxation. This is the second possibility. And third possibility, in case there is an error in the return, when as I mentioned, you return for the excise duty will be populated automatically from the declarations. Once this is being automatically populated from the declaration, there is a possibility if there is an error. If there is an error, you need to speak to the FTA. You need to request for the refund. Uh, generally, the first two categories applies in, for the importer. They are buying and importing and exporting. Uh, for the manufacturer, they are taking the excisable goods, paying excise duty. From there, they are manufacturing excisable product to avoid the double. This clause is generally applicable as on the importer. And this clause is applicable for the manufacturer of the excisable goods. And this error can be made by any party or they can be glitch in the system as well. So these are the three possibilities you can apply for the refund. Then nothing like this for the VAT, you are buying goods, you are paying input tax, then you are selling, you are paying output tax, whatever number you are buying this input tax, is your asset, current asset, your right to take it back from the FTA, you are knocking it out in your return, you are paying the net amount to the FTA, no, nothing like this. These are the only possibility to take the excise duty refund from the FTA. Will you be able to take refund subsequently? This, I think we have already discussed this. Just look into this example. They are given in the guide issued by the, published by the FTA. ABC imports raw tobacco and pays excise duty on the tobacco. Just keep in mind, as I mentioned in a previous slide, this clause is applicable on the manufacturer. Now ABC, they are importing raw tobacco, pays excise tax on the tobacco, 1000. ABC then uses the tobacco to produce cigarettes for the sale to the public for 3000. The cigarettes are new excisable products. Though importing, they, this party importing tobacco, this is a manufacturer, then exporting cigarettes. Tobacco they are importing, cigarettes they are selling. They paid excise duty here, whatever the price. Now they are selling cigarettes. Again, they are paying excise duty. Whenever they are manufacturing cigarettes, it will be subject to excise as well. So these products are being used in the cigarette. Cigarette itself is subject to excise duty. So principally, this person should not pay excise tax two times. So cigarettes are a new excise goods are subject to excise tax at the point they are produced or manufactured. The point they are ready to be held out for retail sale. Excise tax will be due based on their designated retail selling price. Yes. ABC must pay excise duty at 3000 on the cigarette. Cigarettes are subject to excise duty and this is on manufacturer. They are liable to excise duty. The ABC has used the tobacco to produce a new excisable goods, which is subject to excise duty. Yes, that was discussed earlier. It may deduct the 1000. They are asking may deduct. Principally, it should be shall deduct. It may deduct the 1000 AD excise tax previously paid on tobacco just to avoid double taxation. Its net tax liability will be 2000. So this is basically second, as I mentioned, if you are importing or taking the excisable goods, paying excise duty, manufacturing another product which is subject to excise, provide a double taxation, you have a right to take the refund on the excise duty that you already paid. Digital stamps, this is another new concept that we'll be discussing in our coming webinars. Digital stamps is basically, <laughs> this is the requirement of the law that you need to give a specific mark to the excisable products and what is the reason for this, why they want to do this. They want to do this to validate authenticity of the excisable goods. These are the authenticity of the excisable goods. Genuine authenticity of the excisable goods. Second thing to track and trace the excisable goods. These are the two reasons that the FTA has already launched digital tax stamps. So some products it has already been implemented. For some products it will be implemented in the future. Objective is basically to maintain the authenticity of the product. These are the genuine products, and to track, sorry, track and trace the projects. These are two reasons for this. So this is the overview of the excise duty. And in case you are in need of any support, you can speak to us. We are always there to help you. So ready to listen as usual, ready to understand and ready to deliver. We can be approached at info at presscoupal.com. Thank you very much for being with me today. And if you have any question, I'm happy to address your question. There are stockpiler account for option here, whichever is, whichever is later or earlier. 
the stock pilot option as i mentioned three possibility is there if the law was if the law was being implemented your stock was in the warehouse you are liable to pay excise duty on that stock if the new products are being available this is second option and third option as we discussed earlier the three different possibility was there the third option was there the out of these three things whichever is coming first you will be liable to pay excise duty at that stage this is date of acquisition effective date of the law new product so out of this whatever it will be earlier you will be liable to pay tax on that date exactly on so any other question no okay guys thank you very much and have a lovely evening if you have any question as i mentioned earlier, earlier as well you are most welcome and we will be sharing this recording of our presentation. You can enjoy the recording as well. Thank you and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching the video. Click on the bell and subscribe to the YouTube channel.